Software effects processors we use in our DAWs almost always come with a large collection of preset settings, which aim to make it easier for novice users to properly apply the effect until they've gained enough mastery to dial up their own sounds. They can also be useful to more experienced users to save and recall settings they've made that work well for reuse on other tracks and in other songs. Virtual compressors are no exception. They always include a number of presets, usually labeled as to the suggested application, like fat kick or punchy mix. But since compression is a dynamics process, you can't count on presets to automatically work as you might with some other plugin types. Achieving an appropriate compression effect that a preset promises is completely dependent on the recorded level of the track you're running through it. If the audio is coming in at a significantly different level than when the preset was created, the resulting compression might range from negligible, almost no effect if the current level is much lower, to way overdone, unpleasantly squashed if the current level is much higher. It's up to the current user to determine when the effect is at the proper expected strength by adjusting either the signal's input level or the threshold setting, which negates some of the advantage of using a preset, at least for novices, since it means you'll have to already know what the specific effect should sound like. Plus, signals may vary considerably in their recorded dynamic range. Some performers may maintain more consistent levels than others, or compression may have already been applied as the recording went down, complicating its reuse at the later mix stage. Now, an experienced user will certainly find it useful to save and recall his favorite compression settings. He'll already know what the effect should sound like when those settings are applied to different tracks, especially if he created the preset himself, and he'll know what tweaks will be needed to adapt different recordings for a particular compression effect. But people who are new to compression might be better off focusing on mastering the theory and operation of the compressor, rather than trying to search out and amass a collection of presets, as they may be used to doing with say, their favorite synth, for example. The best way to really get the most out of compression is to study the effects of the various controls, how they alter the resulting compression characteristic in a wide variety of situations. This should ultimately prove to be more efficient than hunting for an appropriate preset each time compression is thought to be needed, and then having to further tweak the settings blindly to adapt it to a particular recording, which may end up being as time-consuming as just dialing up the settings from scratch based on familiarity with the processor's inner workings. Once you've got a good solid handle on the basic concept and operation of the controls, you'll be able to apply compression much more efficiently and creatively in a wide variety of situations, with the very different source recordings you'll inevitably encounter. And then, if you want, you can still go ahead and save your best efforts as presets, just for convenience.